What an amazing day of service uh, that has been a buzz on our campus all day. Uh, we started this morning with literally thousands uh, converging on our campus uh, to receive uh, food at our king's table. And uh, I rejoice in delight in knowing nobody was turned away. Every person who needed food was able to receive it. Yeah! I am just grateful. <laughs> that we were able to serve in that capacity. Can you believe today was our last day and we concluded having fed over 800,000 people in the pandemic. Uh, it's just evidence of what our God can do. Uh, remember quickly, do I have any volunteers doing double duty if you did King's Table and Christmas City? <laughs> they, they got the James Brown spirit. It ain't nowhere in the Bible. Uh, but they, they are the hardest working people in the body of Christ, and we're so grateful. A uh, high accolades and commendation uh, to both uh, Pastor Kerry Turner and uh, Pastor Carla Stokes, uh, who are the wonderful women in the ministry. Uh, and we are uh, so grateful. Uh, let me pause and uh, thank God for the presence of our leader. Uh, he is uh, what uh, they used to call Adam Clayton Powell, the lion in the lobby. And I'm just uh, appreciative that we've got strong and firm and committed, unwavering leadership uh, on Capitol Hill uh, representing our, our community. Help me thank God for the presence of our congressman, uh, Hank Johnson. Yeah! Thank you, Pastor Bryant. Pastor Bryant has been thanking and giving praise and glory to the Lord, but also to the people who are the arms and legs of new birth. Uh, Baptist Church yeah. and uh, so that's what is on my heart is in terms of uh, you and what you do for the people because this is a, a dreary day kind of and uh, some of y'all might feel a little dreary in your heart but you still came out today. Yes sir. Yes sir. You still came out today yeah. and, um, and, and it is that spirit to come out even though you may not be feeling the best. That is so praiseworthy. So I want to thank all of you all. And for everybody who's happy and not a care in the world, thank you too. Yeah. But it's the people that are being served today who you came out, whether or not you feel good or not, those, those are who you came out to serve. Yeah. And so I just want to thank you on behalf of the community for all that you do to uh, make life better for just one or two people, but unfortunately it's gonna be more than that. But I wanna also give thanks to my good friend, Pastor Jamal Bryant, who has led this church as if he has been here for a generation. It feels like he's been here, you know, because he has plowed so much ground during the time that he's been here. So I thank him for his leadership. It means so much for our community. Feeding 800,000 people in, in the course of this pandemic, I mean, it, it's truly outstanding. I don't think there's any other church, any other pastor that can claim credit for that, but Pastor Brian is not claiming credit. He's just doing the work. Yeah. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Father, we thank you so much for being with us today. We thank you for every life, every family that is visiting us today. God, we pray that they feel your love and how much you care for them as they come and we bless and fellowship and love on each other today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, listen, it is no way possible that we would be able to do this alone. Our pastor had an incredible vision for us to make sure that our community, all of our children and youth had a wonderful Christmas today and Pastor Stokes with her phenomenal self and our entire outreach team have been working so hard for months to do this, but this year in partnership with uh, Sister Carrie and the King's Table, we also partnered with a number of foster care agencies that we want to acknowledge today where we gave out over 150 bags for our beautiful children and foster care. Give it up for the Lord for that. Amen. And so we want to acknowledge the DeKalb County Family and Children's Services. We want to acknowledge the Academy for Family Empowerment. We want to acknowledge grandparents raising grandchildren. Yes, and we want to acknowledge Positive Growth Inc. All of them have been incredible partners with us. Christ our Savior.
Jesus, our Lord. We came to lift him up today. I need everybody to begin a like, to begin a comment, and share this great experience of worship. Come on, everybody, clap your hands in the building. Let's worship Jesus. Yes, we worship you. Yes. Yes, we do. We worship you. Yes, we do. Can y'all say that with me? We worship you. Everybody lift it up one more time. Say it. We worship you. Come on, come let us adore him. Everybody, let's worship, even in your home. Come. Come let us adore him. Say it. Come let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Kneel down before him. We came to worship and adore. Worship Everybody lift your praise. Come let us adore him. Say, come. Come let us adore him. Come let us adore yeah. him. Kneel down. Kneel down before him. We come to worship and worship and adore him. Come on, let's lift up this great praise. Emmanuel said. Let's say it one more time. Come, let us adore him. Everybody say it. Come. Come, let us all adore him. Come, let us adore him. And let's kneel down before him. Kneel down before him. That's it. Use your voice, even with your mask on. Worship and Worship adore him. And adore him. Come on, everybody. Sing.
Welcome, welcome, welcome all. Welcome to New Birth this morning. Welcome to those that are here. Welcome to those that are visiting us virtually and viewing virtually. Thank you so much. My name is John McLaughlin, and I, my wife's name is April McLaughlin. I want to thank all of you. I also want to take this time to ask that we support uh, the Call to Conquer bookstore for the holidays, folks. Get something there, books, gifts. A uh, perfect time to pick something up from the Call to Conquer bookstore. And on behalf of myself, Pastor Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, we want to thank you for joining us this morning and wish you a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and let's all remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. God bless you. Good morning, New Birth. 
I am praying and believing that you all are well. My name is Brittany. Look, I am so excited to be here to share the scripture of the morning with you. This particular scripture tells a significant part of the story of the coming of Jesus the Christ. We're reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And the word of the Lord reads, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, tending to their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring to you good news that will be of great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great cloud of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those with whom his favor rests. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. excited about this moment in our service. You know, First Chronicles 29 tells the story of King David making probably the most significant financial gift to the house of the Lord. In David's own words, he says, because I have set my affection, my love to the house of my God, I'm giving of my private treasure, gold and silver. Is it any wonder that the king who praised so extravagantly would also give so extravagantly? Absolutely. In the second chapter of Matthew, the wise men came and brought Jesus gifts, born king of the Jews. They came giving of their time, their talent, their treasures, and their testimony. Why? They journeyed afar, which represents their time. They, they began to give their gifts to each, every, to every person. But they brought the gifts, they brought their tithes, and they gave their treasures and their tents. They gave it because they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yes. And because of that, those gifts are valued gifts worthy of a king. Absolutely. And because of that, the Bible says that they fell down and they worshiped Jesus, yes. which was their kingship and their lordship. That all represented their testimonies. Absolutely. So what we're really saying is that giving is a natural reaction of loving it and is. honoring, right? So our gifts, our offerings are our chance to show tangibly our love for God. So you don't have to wait 
to bear your gifts. You can bring a gift to the king now. By sowing, you can give by Givelify, PayPal, text to give, or on our secure New Birth website. The platforms are listed below. wake up the atmosphere can we just put a praise in the house if you really love Jesus you ought to give him praise if you know he's a keeper you ought to give him praise if you know he's a mind regulator you ought to give him praise Jesus Christ our Lord this is the reason for the season he is the reason for the season do me a favor for one second somebody just shout the name Jesus Glory to God. We are so excited to have our dear sister with us today, all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. She was a part of Sunday Best. Her mother is a powerful, powerful woman of God. She is a worship leader. She's a wife. She's a mother. She's a psalmist. And she is here today for the first time at New Birth. I need you all to help me celebrate Tamisha Sampson Johnson as she leads us further in worship. Come on, somebody welcome her today.
Come on, open up your mouth if he's your Lord. Come on, would you bless him if he's your God? Come on, he's worthy of it. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all the praise. Give him all the thanksgiving. We worship him. There is no God like him. He's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Oh, how I love Jesus. It's the sweetest name on earth. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Would you give him glory? Oh, I want to see him. That look upon his face. If you can't say nothing, you ought to wave your hand. But I believe you got some praise on your lips. I believe there ought to be a shout in your heart. I ought to think there should be a dance in your feet. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah! I thank him for saving me. I searched all over. I can't find nobody. There's nobody like him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is a wonderful time of the year. Uh, that we're coming to give God praise and coming to give him honor and coming to give him thanksgiving. Do me a favor. I don't want you to take it for granted. Would you thank God, if for nothing else, that you are COVID free? If you can't thank him. Come on, 800,000 people have died. Look at you breathing on your own. Look at you without a respirator. Look at you. What a mighty God we serve. I am excited uh, about us uh, coming back uh, into the sanctuary on New Year's Eve. I need you to make all deliberations uh, necessary to join me here on the campus of our church on New Year's Eve. Two opportunities for worship at uh, 12 noon and then again at 10.30 p.m. Uh, we're asking that uh, you would bring your vaccination card. If you are not vaccinated, I need you to please prepare yourself. We will be doing rapid COVID testing right on our campus. I'll be before you come in the sanctuary, somebody say amen. Uh, before you come in the sanctuary, you will uh, be tested for COVID. If uh, you already have a vaccination card, we're going to have uh, an express HOV lane for you to just whiz right on through. Uh, and so I would uh, encourage you to please take advantage of it. I want to just brag on our church for just one moment. Uh, yesterday, our sanctuary, our campus uh, was just uh, on fire. It was electric. And I hope those of you who are in the chapel will celebrate with us. On yesterday, almost 4,000 people came on our campus. Come on, come on, almost 4,000 people. Uh, we were able to uh, bless uh, 1,500 families uh, with uh, food baskets that will bring them all the way uh, through the holidays. Uh, and as soon as we concluded with that, on the other side of the campus, we were able to bless, I think, almost 1,800 children uh, with toys for Christmas, uh, not just uh, from the... Uh, Atlanta metropolitan area uh, but I need you to give God glory we were able to bless the orphanages of Atlanta uh, so that those uh, young people will know that they are loved, that they are cared for and that they are uh, valued. How many of you have been reading through the book of Luke through this season? Uh, you've been reading through the book of Luke Luke chapter 19 has blown me away. I'm telling you it, it, it's messed me all the way up do not let the sun go down without you reading Luke chapter 19. It's going to bless you in an amazing way. I, I am excited. Our team is constructing around the perimeter of our sanctuary a live prayer wall. 
We are constructing a prayer wall. I need you here on New Year's Eve and on the first Sunday uh, because we want you to write out what is your declaration of faith that you need our intercessors to be praying over and for. How many of you believe God still answers prayer? He still answers prayer. And so you're going to be able to write on that prayer wall. Our intercessors, our deacons, our elders are going to be laying hands on that prayer wall and coming into agreement for what it is that you have faith for. Our theme for 2022 is business as unusual. Business as unusual. I believe with everything in me, next year is going to be altogether different. Uh, next year, how many of you all feel that? You sense that? It's not going to be the way that it used to be, uh, but God is going to take us into overdrive. I ought to park here parenthetically and share with you because business is as unusual. We're doing things a little bit different here at New Birth. We're only doing in-person service on first and third Sundays. In-person service in our sanctuary will only be first and third Sundays. Second and fourth Sundays will be virtual. Govern yourself accordingly. You come here the second Sunday in January, you'll be knocking on an empty door. So please, on the first and third Sunday, uh, make sure that you do all that you can. Our New Year's revival is January 11th through the 13th. And I uh, want you to please uh, join us here. I'm looking for God to perform signs and wonders. I'm looking for God uh, to give us tangible evidence of the inner working of the Holy Ghost. Uh, my dear brother, uh, Prophet Dione Baez from Venezuela is going to be here. And I am telling you, I am looking for God to do the outlandish and to do the ridiculous. Would you lift up both of those hands? I want to pray for you even before we go into the word of God. How before it is that I pray, would you just open up your mouth and just tell God what you need? Tell God what you want. Tell God what you're standing in the gap for. Tell God what's going on in your mind. Tell him what's going on in your body. Tell him what's going on in your spirit. Tell him, hear this, what's going on in your finances. Tell him what's going on in your thoughts. I need you to talk to God for just one moment. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Lord, we come to you today because we know you are a prayer answering God. If we thought for one moment you were not able, we wouldn't ask you. But because we know that you can do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can think, dream, hope, or even imagine, we're asking you to meet the need we haven't discussed. Handle the concern we have not spoken. Address whatever has us preoccupied. I pray, dear Lord, heal us from diseases we didn't know we had. Stop the enemies we've never even met. In Jesus' name, amen. And those of you who believe your prayer is going to get answered, would you give God some sign of affirmation? Y'all don't sound like people who got prayers answered. We were able to bless some 3,000 people uh, just on yesterday because of how it is that you give and you share. I, I wanted you to know uh, that uh, those that died in the tornado in Kentucky, your church, uh, New Birth, uh, is uh, paying for those funeral services on tomorrow. Uh, and I wanted to thank you for how it is that you give. Uh, for how it is that you sow and for how it is that you share. Uh, thank you so much, Sister Dana, Sister Felicia, for ushering us into giving. If you have not yet given, I need you to please do so on all of our platforms that are available to you, uh, whether that's through Givelify, whether it's push to pay or text to give. Uh, I drove past the mall the other day. I drove past the mall the other day. I wasn't even going. I drove past the mall the other day and you couldn't even get in the parking lot. Why? Because people were in a rush to give to others. But people are slow to give to God. I, I need you to be in a rush. I need you to give to God at the same speed of the expectation of your deliverance. If it doesn't matter to you how long you got to wait, take your time. 
But if you need God to do something, I need you to sow even right now. I need you to tithe right now. I want you to give right now. Would you join me in uh, uh, Luke chapter 2? Join me in Luke chapter 2. And I'm going to look at just one verse, and that's verse number 7. Luke chapter 2, verse number 7. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. She gave birth to her firstborn. It was a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them. I want to preach for a little while uh, today using as a subject the audacity of no. The audacity of no. Comrades, in uh, 1986, former First Lady Nancy Reagan went on national television and pleaded with the populace to just say no to drugs. This was uh, essentially a smoke and mirror deflection from the reality that her husband's vice president, George Bush, was the operative working with intelligence agencies to infiltrate the black community with controlled substances in order to finance underground military operations. The government adopted the position that drug addiction was cured simply from a decision of a proclamation, which is to utter the words no. The whole campaign was built on an irrational premise that good people know how to say no and bad people say yes. The argument leaves no room to unpack the complexities of compulsive behavior that sometimes will overwhelm a person's control. It fostered the immoral position that addiction was, com was criminalization and addiction was not a disease. It was out of this position that landed over one million black men in jail for drug-related possession. When it was announced, just say no, collectively, the entire African-American community should have arisen and shouted back at her, no. I need you to take one moment and think, about the stuff you should have said no to years ago that speaks to where it is that you are right now. I know for many of us it is alien, it is foreign to your lips and has been removed from your lexicon because you are afflicted with being a people pleaser. But I need every person in this room as loud as you can. Would you just shout no? Every person online, I need you to just type no. No, hear this, is a um, super mysterious superpower. No is a superpower because it's um, easily misunderstood and difficult for people to accept. We don't really understand its strength because oftentimes it's associated with negativity. No, hear this, is an instrument of integrity. No is the shield you are supposed to use as a defense against exploitation. To say no does not mean you are rude. To say no means I am clear on my boundaries. No, hear this, is a decisive decision. No is an announcement 
by the unveiling of my temperament that you do not have access to what you used to. So you got to become familiar with it. And not only do you have to become familiar, you have to become fluent. No, I'm not going. No, I don't feel like it. No, I'm not helping you again. No, I'm not going to loan it to you. No, I cannot sign for you. Hear this. Sometimes you have to make it more palatable to other people's sensitivity and dress it up for their insecurity by saying, no, thank you. It was never spoken to offend you, but it's actually to protect your own priorities. No, hear this, is your safe word. You have to learn how to say that. Somebody just shout no. No is the tool and the barrier by which we establish and maintain the distinction of the perimeter of self. No says, this is who I am. No says, this is what I value. No indicates, this is what I will and will not do. People who don't know how to say no do not practice self-care. I just said something. I better say that again. People who do not know how to say no do not know how to practice self-care. People who are uncomfortable with the word no have their self-respect up for auction. People who do not say no have self-esteem that is not stable. I need you to say no again. No, hear this, is a two-sided coin. No is a two-sided coin. There is a no that is a mirror and there is a no that is a window. Say that again, Pastor. No is a two-sided coin. One side of the coin of no is a mirror. The other side of the no is a window. The mirror of no is what I have to tell myself. The window of no is what I got to tell y'all. Saying no to yourself is harder than saying it to other people. Let me help you. Saying no to yourself. I need you to have this. Saying no to yourself here is the code word for saying no to yourself is self-discipline. People who do not know how to say no to themselves do not have self-discipline. Can you tell yourself, no, I can't eat this late? Can you tell yourself, no, I cannot buy another pair of shoes? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Can you say, no, I am not going to give them a piece of my mind? Can you say no? I am not going to break into their phone. It just got quiet right there. <laughs> Can I say no? Hear this when I'm not angry. Can I say no and not use it as a retaliation or a weapon of revenge? Can I say no when I am not paying you back? You've got to be able to tell yourself no. You've got to have the resolve. No, I'm not going to let myself get hurt like that again. No, I'm not going to allow myself to get that angry. No, I refuse to slip back into that dark place. No, I am not going to accept the first offer. No, I am not going to repeat the cycle. No, I am not going to fall for the same kind of person in a different body. When, when, when is the last time you told yourself no to help you? Most of us are out of shape and overweight 
and broke because we only say yes. Uh, it just got quiet here. Uh, Dr. Roy Barmstein from Florida State University uh, registered in the Journal of Neuroscience that no is transmitted to the brain of the hearer much more harsher than the intention of the speaker. So how they receive my no is not always how I said it. We have a deep and an abiding aversion to the word no so that we got to work ourselves up to how we going to tell them no. Isn't it crazy that we are more preoccupied with not hurting people even if it hurts our destiny. Why can't you say no? And so we... Um, we sprinkle sugar on it. Instead of saying no, I wish I could, but I can't. <laughs> Y'all just got convicted over that Christmas party. <laughs> Instead of saying no, I already made plans for five deacons that's going to holler at me. Instead of saying no, let me check with my wife. Instead of saying no, I wish I had known sooner. No matter how you couch it, a no is still a no. Mike Murdoch told me this many years ago. I want to give it to you. Somebody needs to write it down, put it in your hand. It's going to bless you. You may not need it next week, but you're going to need it in the incoming weeks. Here's what Mike Murdoch told me. You never know how a person really feels about you until you have to tell them no. Uh, everything is warm and fuzzy. and <laughs> When you tell them yes, but when you tell them no, do they still love you? Do they still want to be around you? Do they still respect you? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Do you understand the authority of the power of the word no? I've been meandering around uh, the book of Luke as you should have been over the last 19 days. And I bumped into a strange occurrence that I hadn't paid attention to before I started meditating on this message for today. I need you to look at it with me today. It's going to blow your mind. I need you to see something that you had never considered that I'm telling you after today, you're going to have to reevaluate. The angel came to visit, hear this, the Virgin Mary. The angel came to visit the Virgin Mary. I got to give it to you again because you haven't been to the Sunday school program. The angel came to visit the Virgin Mary. Mary, Pastor, I got that. Uh, Mary is a virgin, which means she is celibate. She not getting none. She not getting it in. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. <laughs> she, she, she is the virgin, Mary, who is celibate. She is abstaining. I know these are words we don't use in the 21st century church. She, she, she done made a vow around her body. Now, let, let me raise the ante for you. She is, um, she is a virgin. She is celibate. Now, let me add this on you. And she's engaged. She's engaged. Now, y'all come here. This is just for those of y'all who was ever teenagers because Mary is 14 years of age. And we've got evidence in the text. Here it is that she spends some time at the house with no parental supervision. Some of y'all just had a flashback, right? Come on back. Communion is on first Sunday. Stay right there. Listen, nobody is home and she's engaged. She's engaged. Here it is to a construction worker. Uh, uh, Who been sweating all day? In the Palestinian sun. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Fixing roofs and chairs and tables. Walking around with no shirt on. Come on now, y'all. Come on, come on right here. And, and, and here it is. She is already engaged. And nobody has ever uh, dealt with um, the nights 
that Mary and Joseph had Netflix and chill. And it got tight. Come on now. And she already got an engagement ring on. <laughs> and mama ain't home. Come on here. And she still said no. We ain't talking about all the people that tried to holler at her on the way to the market. And she still said no. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We, we ain't said nothing about how we got hot and steamy in the back of the chariot. <laughs> and she still said no. Are, are, are y'all still here? Had she given Joseph some, this is gospel for grown-ups, had she slept with him once, she would have forfeited the entire promise. Everything she was supposed to get, she would have lost it. But the angel came and said, God wants to bless you. Only five of y'all ought to shout. God wants to bless you for the nights you said no. I need somebody to keep it real. Can you imagine God is going to bless you for who you refuse to sleep with? God is going to do something for you because you found your strength in the middle of a weak moment for the way that you left out of that room and said, I got too much destiny. God said, I got to bless you for saying no. That got too real real quick. I, I need you to be seated. Some of y'all ain't shouting. Some of y'all ain't clapping. And it's, it's obvious why you're not. It's okay. God help me. But, but the three of y'all. God, I need some real people in here that can say, Lord, you owe me a blessing. Because I walked away from what I wanted. I I walked away from what I could have had. I walked away from what I had access to. You gotta bless me for my no. She said no. And because she said no, an angel came and said there is a blessing in store for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the plot thickens. Because um, not long after that, Joseph is trying to figure out what is going on. How? She ain't give me none. God, oh, help me in here. And I, and I put a ring on it. Oh, come on, come on in here. And now, after waiting all of that time, she's pregnant by somebody else. The Bible says that she wanted to put her away privately because God cannot trust people who will only make moves based off of what other people are going to think and how other people are going to respond. He wanted to get his ring back, but the Lord told Joseph, stick with her. I know it's going to be rough. Stick with her. I can't hear nobody. I know church people are going to talk about you, but stick with her. I know they're going to make up stuff about you, but stick with her. See, some of y'all think I'm talking about Joseph. I'm talking about those of you who had to make a critical decision. Am I going to stick with my assignment? Am I going to stick with my call? It's costing me friends. It's costing me reputation. It's causing me association. But God said, if you'll hold to my hair, and I need five of y'all that say, can nobody do me like Jesus? I know you anointed. I know you got the Holy Ghost. But I need three of y'all that say, Pastor, there were some days I got sick of being special. I got sick of being called upon. I'm sick of being extraordinary. I just want to blend in and be with everybody else. And God said, you are fearfully and wonderfully.
already made. Look at your neighbor and say, it's been rough for me, but I wouldn't trade this anointing. It's been hard for me, but I'm sticking with my assignment. I've been stressed as all get out, but I refuse to go back to who I used to be. I got to see this through. mean to tell me you have never had a moment where you want to second guess what God was calling you to do? I need some real people right here. You mean to tell me there were not some days you wanted to hide your crown and just be regular? But when you look back over your life, you realize that God was shielding you from being normal and average and regular. I'm not talking about no material stuff. But will anybody give God glory just for your assignment? Just for your call? Just for your gift? Just for your placement in the kingdom? I will hold to his hand. Then, this is, um, hallelujah, hallelujah. David said, whatever you do, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. I know next Saturday folk are waiting on all kind of stuff. But if there's anybody that just needs the Holy Ghost, would you just lift up that hand and open up your mouth? It's all I need. He, he is the air I breathe. And him I live, I move, I have my very being. I need your Holy Spirit. Touch me again, God. Hallelujah. Touch me again, God. I need an extra dosage of it. Touch me again, God. If you don't need the Holy Spirit, don't say nothing in here. But I need you in your living room. I need you in your bedroom. I need you to open up your mouth and lift up that hand. You better repent for trying to hide your anointing. You better repent for being jealous of regular people. You better repent for trying to trade in your birthright. There's too much grace. I'm thankful. Thankful that Joe didn't say no. But this new birth is where it gets murky. I want you to look at Luke chapter 2. Be seated. I'm almost finished. Look at Luke chapter 2. When the family finally gets to Bethlehem, the labor pains are starting to kick in. It's getting intense. And in Luke chapter 2, we find the first Airbnb. <laughs> and here's what's crazy. What our Sunday school teachers never told us is that this is not the Marriott. This is not the Hilton. It's not Embassy Suites. I need you to hear this. This is a house owned by somebody in Joseph's family. What'd you just say, Pastor? I'm telling you, a relative wouldn't open the door. Oh, God, I can't hear nobody. They know she's carrying. They know she's in pain. They know that the next couple of hours are critical, but still won't open the door. <laughs> I know y'all are from some perfect families, but I, I need those of you that can keep it 100. You, you've been in tight places where, where your family could have helped you, but they, they watched you squirm because they took hellish delight in your uncomfortability because they refused to open a door for you. They, they didn't even open the door. They talked to Joe through the door. They talked to Joe through the door and they said some, something that, uh, that nobody has ever wrestled with me out loud about. They said to Joseph, and by virtue Mary, there is no room. And the question I'm encumbered to ask you today 
is if they told Mary and Joseph there was no room knowing they are carrying, knowing they are experiencing pain, knowing that they are about to birth. Do you know the question nobody has ever raised for you that I've got to ask you this morning? I've got to ask you because you've been reading this text all your life and never considered it. i got to ask you this. Who was in the room so important that you couldn't move them out to make space for God? God, y'all don't like me in here today. And I, I need to know who is it in your life that has taken so much space that you have made them a high priority and put them over God. Some of y'all going to get mad. I don't care if it's your own mama. I don't care if it's your child. I don't care if it's your boyfriend. Don't you let nobody take up the space that God is supposed to be in. Who was it that they said, no, that space is already occupied. I can't let you in there. What shall separate me from the love of God? I better remix that. Who shall separate me from the love of God? I need you, if you're in the sanctuary, I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them you are not that important. Hallelujah. I don't care if they're sitting in your bed. Tell them you are not that important. Hallelujah. I don't care if they're in your living room. I don't care if they pay your rent. I don't care if they sign your check. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Nobody is so important that I won't move them out the way in order for God to be birthed in my experience. I need you to do me a favor because some of y'all will only shout if certain people are around you because you don't want folk to feel uncomfortable or you don't want them to feel out of sorts. But would you do me a favor? Would you worship God like he is your only priority? Make room. Hey. Make room. I tell you, make room. The king of glory is coming into your house. Make room. Make room. How are you in the presence of a favorite fetus and not fall on your face? God help me. How do you not help somebody who you can see bursting with potential? You can see what's on them and you have made a decision not to help them. Hallelujah. Thank you. Be seated. Hi. Be seated, please. This is practice. We'll be in church in two weeks. Be seated. I haven't been able to tell y'all that in two years. Be seated right where you are. I, I, I saved the best shout for last. Hallelujah. Because I need to see where my church is. I'm, I miss my church. I need to see where my church is. I, I got to just say one last thing. And I'll see whether you respond to it or know how to respond to it. And I'm telling you, everything in you has got to respond to this last declaration. Here it is. Is that the people in the house told Mary and Joseph no. His relatives told them no. They had nowhere to go. Everywhere they went, they were told no. Here's your shout. In spite of being told no, here it is, they delivered anyway. And that, 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 that's all I wanted to tell y'all. I don't care who told you no, you still gonna get it. I don't care who tried to block you, it's already yours. It don't matter who tried to blackball you, if God be for you, who can be against you? I know we're trying to follow protocol, would you just elbow your neighbor and tell him you still gonna get it? You still gonna have it? You still gonna drive it? You still gonna graduate? 
you still gonna open it. And if the devil is listening, I came to tell the devil no. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. This means war. I need you to shout out loud. No, I will not be depressed. No, I will not be suicidal. No, I will not lose my child. No, I will not lose my focus. God told me to tell the screamers, this is your season for yes. Everything you ask God is yay and amen. Everything you've been waiting on is yay. Hallelujah. Look like you crazy and talk to yourself and tell yourself, I'm going to get it anyway. I can't hear nobody. Weapons are formed against me, but I'm going to get it anyway. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him? I'm going to get it anyway. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Here it is, and get it anyway. I can't hear nobody. When my mother and father forsake me, I'm going to get it anyway. I've been judged by the color of my skin, not the content of my character, but I'm going to get it. afford it but I'm gonna get it anyway it don't match my background but I'm gonna get it anyway my own family hates my gut but I'm gonna get it somebody shout out loud I'm gonna get it anyway y'all what do me a favor I don't want you to shout over the nose but would you dance for 10 seconds like the biggest yes of your life is getting ready to happen the biggest yes you've been waiting on is about to arrive the biggest yes that you need for your victory season you've had to deal with a whole lot of them 
but I feel like a yes is on its way to your house. Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. Yeah. I said a yes is getting ready to hit your life. He said whatever you ask for in my name, it shall be given to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Somebody shout, I'm going to get it anyway. In spite of all the no's, in spite of all the shut doors, in spite of all of the rejection, the spirit of the living God wants you to know you're going to get it anyway. I don't know who needed that word today. Maybe I was preaching to me, but you are going to get it anyway. You ought to thank God that whenever God is giving out favor, he never does a poll. He doesn't ask for people's buy-in. He's not waiting for somebody else to co-sign. As a matter of fact, in order for you to walk into this level of favor, stop looking out the window, waiting for somebody else to do it. Look in the mirror. Now you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, have I confessed Jesus as the Lord of my life? Why am I saying no to church membership? Why am I not committed? Why am I saying no and not allowing God to take full occupancy of my heart? Many of you, most of us, don't own hotels, but you don't have room in your heart because all your exes have taken occupancy. All the people you used to date, all the people who you used to look up to, are taking all of this space so you got no room for God to be God in your life. I want you to give your life over to God. I want you to profess him as the Lord of your life. Would you just say yes to his will and to, and to his way? I want you to join this ministry. I need you to do me a favor. I'm giving you a, a ghetto cheat code. I want you to join because you only got two Sundays left to join online. When you come New Year's Eve, you say, I, I've been going there. <laughs> I'm already a member. Don't ask me. I'm already connected. I want to challenge those of you who can hear my voice. How many of you are believing God for a yes before the year ends? I can't hear you. I said, how many of you? Let me say it another way. How many of you need a yes before this year ends? I want to challenge every person, if you've not yet tithed, I need you to do so. If you've not yet sown, I need you to do so. I want to, Pastor Lemons to come and close us out. But I want to challenge every person that can, every person that will. I want you to sow a seed of 50 right now. I want you to sow a seed of 50 believing by faith that God's yes is going to override every other no old woman in the church used to say all you need is one yes from God how many of y'all believe that am I the only one I said all you need is one yes from God I'm believing you're going to get it below me are all of the platforms in which you can give I want you to sow that seed here it is when you go on give the five push pay text to give on our secure website I want you to put 50 dash yes because I'm believing that this is going to override the no. Clap your hands for the yes that's coming. Come on, family and friends. Why don't we thank God for that wonderful word from our pastor, Dr. Jamal Bryant. Come on, if that just touched your life, will you just write in the chat even now? Yes, 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 yes. Hey, I got a question for those in the room and for those who are watching us virtually. Do you love Dr. Bryant? Do you love him? Do you love him? 
Come on, make some noise. Let them know. Let them know. Throw some emojis up. Give them a fist bump. Let them know that you love them. Listen, my answer isn't no. My answer is yes. The truth is, this is the most wonderful time of the year, family. So many people are at Lenox Mall. So many people are at the Galleria. So many people are at the Grove. I don't know. They may be even at Marshalls or TJ Maxx, but they are preparing to give gifts to those they love. Even shopping on Amazon. And I have a question for you. Do you love Dr. Bryant? Come on. I got a question for you. Do you love him? Do you love them? Listen, I want you to consider this. I want you to consider this. Just think about it. There's 52 weeks in a year, which means that the man of God at a minimum, at a minimum, has ministered 42, 45, 47 Sundays this year. I want you to consider that in that same spin of time, there are 52 at a minimum, at a minimum group therapies that he's ministered to you. Every weekend, rain, sleet, or snow, this gentleman, man of God, showed up to the king's table to, to shake hands, not only in the front, but to those that are way in the back. I don't know if you've ever been to the property or not, but this thing is about 200 plus acres of land and he takes his time on Pat and Turner to walk every single step to make sure that you are greeted as you come to the property. Can you imagine that just in a week that he takes a minimum of three different meetings with people that's going to help impact this community and this nation, all the while still having time to do an insomniac circle, all the while still having the time to get you prepared for service while getting his haircut, getting his haircut for his uh, uh, preaching homiletics. I don't know about you. I don't know where he has the time. Would you just find somebody and tell him, I don't know where he gets the time to do all of this. And at every moment, we see it as, man, he's so inspiring. Man, he's, he's just moving. I want you to consider, he's not doing this for your entertainment. He's doing this for your enrichment. See, we don't come to church. I want you to get this. We don't come to church to have church. We come to be the church. And when we leave this place, we leave as soldiers being deployed to make disciples and evangelize the world. And how are we able to do that? It is through the heart. It is through the conviction. It is through the words of this man of God. I don't know about you, but if you consider him your pastor, if you consider him your mentor, consider him your coach, consider him your leader, consider him your motivational speaker, consider him your guide that's connected to the culture, I want you not to only shop at Lennox for your cousin. Straight up, throw something in the bag for him. <laughs> throw something in the bag for him. It's not because he's asking, but it's because you care and you do stuff for those you care about. So new birth family on the Christmas holiday season on that list for your grandma, Medea, big mama, big daddy, papa, Mimi, Nana, Aunt Ray Ray, Boo Boo, Shaniqua, whoever's on your list, don't forget Dr. Jamal Bryant. Yeah. Hey, listen. I want you to pray about God. It wasn't really heavy on my list, but I want to do something. You can do two things. I want you to do both of them. I want you to get them a gift. I want you to mail it overnight. It. I want you to send it in the link below. I want you to connect to the giving opportunity digitally. Then I want you to pray for him because it is the prayers of the righteous that availeth much. And I'm telling you something. He can use your prayers. Hey, I got a question just one more time. Do you love Dr. Brian. Yeah. Well, the Lord told Peter, will feed my sheep, will feed the man of God. Make sure that he, he doesn't go hungry. Of course, he is not. And you know what I love about him? Just thinking about it. Just, just thinking about it. He's always so fly. I mean, it's one thing to have a word, but don't you like a man of God that got fruit and fly? You know what I'm saying? Amen. To God be all the glory. Hey, listen, family, we want to invite you to worship with us uh, this coming uh, December 31st, New Year's Eve experience. We have two worship experiences. We have one taking place at 12 and the other at 1030. I don't know if you got the news, but we are letting all those that want to come to come. Whosoever will, let them come. Just bring your back. 
next card, okay? We are so excited about receiving you. God is up to something special. As you have already heard, this is a season of business as unusual. God is going to unfold, unpack, and unwrap all the things that he has prepared for you through the heart and the vision of this man of God, Dr. Jamal Bryant. Hey, family, let's stand up on our feet. If you're watching virtually online, why don't you just begin to wave your hands because we're getting ready to get out of here. We're getting ready to dismiss you. Join us. Join us for group therapy this Tuesday. We're showing the best of group therapy. I know that you have been blessed. I am so excited about what God has in store for us. Lift your hands before heaven in the words of our pastor. As high as you see yourself going, repeat after me, walk with God, and he'll walk with me. Talk to God, and he'll talk to me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Build for God, and he'll build for me. Give to God, and he'll give to me. Love God, because he first loved me. As those hands are still lifted, Father, my answer is not no. My answer is yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. And for this, I'll not only see it, but I'll see it in the land of the living. Everything that you have in store for me. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, elbow somebody and tell them it's a yes for you. It's a yes for you. God Merry bless Christmas. You. And now, special announcements just for you. New birth in Metro Atlanta area, we have an amazing New Year's Eve celebration planned for you. On Friday, December 31st, we will be returning to the sanctuary. We'll begin with a midday worship experience at 12 noon. Doors open at 10.30 a.m. Then join us at 10.30 p.m. for The Return, a New Year's Eve celebration featuring Grammy Award-winning duo Mary Mary. Doors open at 9 p.m. Services are open to the public and proof of vaccination is required for entry. On-site rapid testing will be available two hours before the start of each service for those who are not vaccinated. Also, don't miss our thrilling fireworks display after our 10.30 p.m. service. Bring your family, tell a friend, and come experience the unusual. Save the date for our New Year's Revival, Tuesday, January 11th through Thursday, January 13th at 7.30 p.m. nightly. Get ready for three amazing nights of prophetic ministry featuring Dr. Dione Baez. More details to come. We have one more week left in our Luke in 24 challenge. Are you still reading one chapter of the Gospel of Luke daily as requested by Dr. Bryant? The challenge concludes December 24th. Wake up Christmas morning with a greater appreciation and understanding of who Christ is and why we celebrate. Be sure to share on social media and use the hashtag Luke Challenge. On behalf of New Birth and Dr. Bryant, we pray you have a joyous holiday season. May the love of Christ be present in your home and shared with your loved ones. We pray traveling grace and a safe return to anyone that is traveling. New Birth, we invite you to join us for a very special holiday service, Monday, December 20th at 7.30 p.m. in our chapel. Our guest speaker will be the prophetic life changer, Dr. Juanita Bynum. Please send an email to rsvp at newbirth.org if you'd like to attend. Proof of vaccination is required. Our King's Table will be closed December 19th through January 31st. For local resources, please contact the Atlanta Community Food Bank at 404-892-3333 or visit acfb.org. Philippians 4.6 teaches us not to be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. New Birth, on the first Sunday in January, we will corporately present our requests to God. We invite you to write your prayers on our new prayer wall. Our intercessors will be praying over your request, and we are believing God for miracles, signs, and wonders to follow. We will begin worshiping corporately in our sanctuary after the new year, every first and third Sunday. We welcome you and your family for this in-person experience. Mask will be required. We will continue worshiping virtually on the second, fourth, and fifth Sundays. Please send an email to rsvp at newbirth.org if you'd like to join our studio audience. 
Hey men at New Birth, I'm Elder Ron Saylor and I've just spent a couple of hours with Pastor Bryant getting a clear vision for what men are going to be doing in 2022 in New Birth. I want you to be one of the first ones to hear what the Lord's going to do in this men's ministry. Join me on Wednesday, the 29th of December, 7 o'clock p.m. There's a Zoom link and I'm going to show you what the pastor has shown me. This year is going to be off the chain. Don't miss it.